Welcome everybody in this webinar by European de Europa Tour Operator. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Luigi of the marketing department of Europeando. With me today, you can see him in the other camera. We have Alessandro from uh, the branch office of Europeando in Rome. We will talk about today of uh, new products of Europeando, that is our Italian experiences. We will talk about 23 different uh, itineraries ideas that are available from Rome and Milan that uh, <clears throat> allows you to visit uh, and discover our lovely country in a different way. Let's start uh, talking about who is Europeando. Europeando is an Italian tour operator that was born from the passion of traveling of the Laiolo family that started the organization of travels in 1947 uh, by the intention, by the work of uh, Dante Laiolo and his wife, Rina, that uh, in, the, in 1951 began the organization of international travels. We can see him in this lovely picture here on the left side. And then in the 1962, Rina, his wife, was the first woman in Italy to organize and drive herself directly tours all around Italy and Europe. She is a very, good, a very big pride of our company. Since then, in the, in the 90s, the company has just uh, slightly changed and now we include new professionals and a more modern international structure. We organize any kind of, uh, of tours uh, in Italy and Europe. We, um, as we can see, uh, as we saw uh, with Alessandro, we have a branch office in Rome. Our headquarters is still in the Piedmont region in the city of uh, Aquitaine where the Laiolo family has begun their activities. What we do? Uh, we have a department for individuals that has uh, um, a regular tours catalog with all uh, a lot of departures with our mini tours that operates from Rome, Milan, and Genoa, and uh, that are peculiar mini tours with regular departures that uh, always include. Uh, alternative destinations to the most famous uh, Italian cities. We always include the tasting of local products and have uh, um, the hotels, the accommodation that are included in our tour that are always central in the cities we visit. Uh, and at this, that operates since more than 20 years with these mini tours that have always been updated for, uh, for always be as comfortable as possible for you, we also have from this year for individuals also our Italian experiences that we are going to see and describe uh, and discover in this webinar. We also have, on the other hand, also a department for groups that have a large experiences organizing any kind of uh, uh, tour for groups. Uh, of any size and dimension and topology. For example, we have a large experience organizing school trips from the smallest of 10, 20, 30 people to the biggest up to 300, 400 all along Italy and Europe. We also have a, a large experience organizing peregrinations for all the worship destinations in Italy and Europe. We have an FIP and luxury tours experience organizing tours for, for, uh, for women who have uh, peculiar and exclusive needs. And we also can arrange uh, MICA tours for the business travelers as well. As everybody knows, we are facing this period. We are still facing the whole world, the COVID-19, the um, coronavirus pandemic, that uh, thanks to the vaccination is finally almost over. And uh, we will, uh, until then, until we be over, we will uh, uh, follow in adapting our COVID-free protocol as uh, uh, everybody is doing in this period, this difficult period, adapting our protocol to the, the laws the Italian government is providing us to face uh, the coronavirus widespread. In. We have several measures, for example, for the transports, we guarantee the social distancing in the in the transports uh, left in some empty seats uh, we provide personal equipment as masks and always we guarantee the disinfection of uh, uh, surfaces as um, as us the other providers of other services as well or um, do the same um, the same thing organizing uh, similar measures to ours for example the other transport providers like uh, uh, private boats or public ferries, as well as trains. Um, also, the other places like hotels, of course, and uh, 
the, um, the, the place of cultural interest, the, like museums or palaces uh, have their own protocol for COVID free as well. The last thing I would like to talk about in this uh, uh, introduction is our safe travel program that is thought for this emergency period that give you, give the operator, all the, the tools to face uh, th this moment and uh, to handle easily their bookings with us. It's divided into two different tools. The first one is Save Your Travel that is a flexible booking service that is tough in this emergency period that help you with the generation of voucher that can be um, used for a, a later trip in case someone wants to postpone its trip for 20, 2021 or 2022 period or to find an alternative to their services. The other tool, save your money, this is a small non-mandatory guarantee fee that uh, helps you um, in having the, the right to be um, to be totally refound with 100% of your reservation, your booking with us, in case of your client will suffer of the coronavirus spread. We are talking about the case in which the, the, the client itself will be affected by the coronavirus, so we have to be um, to start the quarantine for him or it could, he, the client could not be available to depart from his city or its region or its country because that creation of a lockdown or on the other hand we here in Italy or in Europe we cannot receive him due of uh, a new activation or lock in uh, of a lockdown in our countries so in for these cases through this, uh, with the, the, the pay of this guarantee fee we guarantee for you a 100% refund this is uh, the last thing I would like to talk to you for in this introduction. Now we will discover deeply all these 23 itineraries of our Italian experiences with Alessandro, my colleague. Hey, thank you very much, Luigi, and good day, everybody from Rome. My name is Alessandro, and I am in charge of the branch office of Europe and in this beautiful city. So as we have talked about this pandemic that everybody in the world knows, we have introduced for the second half of this year and especially for next something really and extremely interesting for you. These are the Italian experiences. That means some tours going to some beautiful places of Italy, not just offering you the accommodation and the visit of the places where you go, but also a very deep experience together with us, the Italian, having accommodation in some of the most amazing places in the country, like castles or old villas, farm holidays, and so on. Having the chance to taste directly at the producer some of the best Italian wines, possibility to learn cooking pasta or bread or pizza or something like this, and many, many other options, as you can see in these beautiful pictures. So uh, the idea we have of experience is make this tour giving you exclusivity and quality in all the aspects because you have to come here with the emotion to uh, to leave all this in Italy and then to go back with these unforgettable moments. Everything respects absolutely 100% the local tradition of Italy in every single place where we go. And the accommodation is the first part of the experience we talk about. It's in some places we offer accommodations in classical hotels, four or five stars, but especially we offer accommodation in the amazing places, in small villages, in suburbs, not in big cities, like in castles or in the ca original caves of the Sassi, Matera, or the truly this amazing little white house with the conic roof uh, in Alberobello in the region of Puglia. That's not all because we have also something really interesting concerning experience in the places where we go. Truffle hunting in the, in the wood, in a forest with the dog and with a professional searcher of white or black truffle in Piedmont and Umbria. Entrance to exclusive museum, castles, cooking lesson with experts cooks in different parts of Italy, visits to some unique museum and workshop where to learn, for example, to uh, to work with the pottery, glass, and so on. When you are having a private sailing, the captain of the boat will not only, uh, with all, not only the owner of the boat, 
but he will be your guide explaining everything about the coast, about the fishing system in the past, his family and so on. So 100% deep inside the Italian culture and tradition. We have tasting of, diff of different products of Italy um, at the wine producer, at the olive oil producer and so on. And we also include lunch or dinner that respect the local tradition. It means it's not just a typical tourist menu like pasta and a slice of meat and so on. But if it pasta, this pasta must be a handmade pasta typical only on this, the area where we are. Uh, the meat and the fish must come exactly in the area where we stay and so on. So as Luigi commented before, we have 23 tours that basically cover 95% of all the Italian regions uh, at the moment. We have departure from Milan in the north of Italy for all the itinerary concerning North Italy and the north of the region Tuscany and all the other departures uh, concerning the center of Italy, the south of Italy and the other tour of Tuscany departs from Rome. The characteristic of this tour is that it's private, it's for a minimum of four people, it's available all year long, but consider that some important, some special dates, like for example Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, uh, Easter week, uh, 15 of August, that it's our Italian Ferragosto, National Banks, uh, St. Petron Day and so on, uh, has the accommodation is very unusual respect to the other hotel. It's mm, frequent that all these places are booked in a very short time. That's why if you don't have, if we don't have availability in the day you're asking for, we can propose a different kind of accommodation or absolutely a new day to respect absolutely all the itinerary we propose has these experiences are absolutely private, you have the chance to collect some parts of the experience from one tour, the other tour, and make your own tour according to your experiences, your wish, your interest, and so on. Basically, all of these tours can be combined all together, make a longer uh, tour, or can be also made shorter if you want to remove something from the original itinerary. We have divided Italy in three levels, the north, the center and the south, including all the uh, regions. We are divided in 20 regions, so we start from the northwest of the region, from the region of Piedmont, where the headquarter of Europeando still is open. Piedmont is the second biggest region of Italy, only the region of Sicily is bigger than Piedmont, but Sicily, you know, is an island. So it's in the Italian peninsula, Piedmont is the lar has the largest surface of all the regions. That's why this region and also some other big, bigger region have two different experiences. In the, the territory of Piedmont is composed by a plain area, the flat of the Po Valley with a lot of rice fields, a bigger area composed by hills where we have some of the best production of Italian wine and another area that is uh, basically mountain in the, mm, uh, at the border with both France at the west and Switzerland at the north. In this first experience of Piedmont, we would like to follow the itinerary of the best regional wine. That's why the accommodation will be in two resorts, two nights in the herd of Monferrato and two nights in the herd of Roero, that together with Lange are UNESCO World Heritage for its amazing landscape of vineyards. Basically, all the tours I'm talking about depart from Milan and has a duration of five days and four nights. In these tours, we are going to search truffles, the uh, white gold of Piedmont, this amazing kind of potato similar to a mushrooms that lives and survives in a relation of symbiosis with some trees in the wood, in the forest of Piedmont and many other Italian regions, the truffle can be found only together with the experience of a professional man and especially the presence of this dog. In this experience, we are going to discover where to search the truffle, how to take the truffle from the, uh, from the, uh, and land and then how to eat the truffle. Of course, we include a lot of visit of wine cellar of production of 
some of the best Italian wines like Barbera, um, Dolcetto, Moscato, Bracchetto in the Monferrato area or um, Bar Baresco, Nebbiolo, Barolo in the Lange area. And we include an amazing visit of the Cathedral of Canelli. Canelli is a little village in the heart of Monferrato known because of his system of kilometers and kilometers of tunnels excavated in the underground and used not to escape from something, but just to keep uh, the, uh, the, the wines in barrel and in bottle. It's a perfect atmosphere and climate to maintain the perfect condition of these wines, especially red wines. We visit the factory of Grappa and we visit the beautiful castle of Cralorno that has a medieval origin. Experience Piedmont number two is uh, suggested for people who like uh, beautiful open air spaces, the landscape of mountains with amazing lakes, valleys, and relax. Uh, we visit, for example, the Monviso, that it's a symbolic place for us Italian because it's the place where the river Po uh, is born, the longest Italian river, but it's also the symbol of the paramount, uh, the, the famous filmmaker, the American filmmaker that chose many years ago, the silhouette of the Monviso has the symbol of its bread. We are going to sleep tonight in an original medieval building in the little village of Ricetto di Candelo, that it's something really special because Ricetto di Candelo is an old medieval village completely surrounded by original wall. It was abandoned for a long time, but since 1970s and 1980s, a lot of local owners decided to restore all the original buildings, make most of them as new hotels or restaurant or uh, shops. You have the chance to stay a couple of nights in one of these original buildings with all the comfort, comfort of the nowadays uh, life. We also spend a, a couple of days in a farm holiday with animals in the Susa Valley, the biggest one of the biggest valleys of the Western Alps, with the chance to have breakfast or dinner in the night with the products made directly by them, like the eggs, uh, the cheese, the milk, and also the honey. It's a very nice experience inside the area of the mountains. Uh, many people come to Italy and go to visit um, the biggest lakes uh, of this country, like Lake Maggiore, Lake Como, Lake Garda, that are probably the most popular. We uh, include a tour on board the boat at Lake Viverone. It's a little lake in the Alpine area with very beautiful landscape. Not as beautiful as the Sacra di San Michele, that it's the symbol of the region Piedmont, a medieval monastery surrounded 30, 60 degrees all around by the Western Alps with the uh, snow during the autumn and winter time. We visit the Museum of the Waldensia, that it's a small community that has a religion similar to the Evangelic that was founded in this a hidden valley of Piedmont, especially in the village of Torre Pellice, and now includes only few members in Piedmont and also on the other side of the Alps in the French area of the region Savoy. We visit one of the biggest fortresses in the north of Italy, the fortress of Bar, close to the border with Aosta Valley, not far from the Mont Blanc, and the castle of Stupinigi, that was property of the royal family Savoia till the second half of 20th century. We moved them to Lombardy, that it's the most populated region of Italy, where at least uh, one sixth of the Italian population, it means 60 million live in Italy, 11 million more or less live in Lombardy, the richest region of the country, uh, of which the capital is Milano. So it's strange to, to believe, but only 30, 40 kilometers south of Milano, a city of 1.5 million inhabitants, there are a lot of rice fields and a very typical uh, farm atmosphere. We are going to visit one of the biggest rice fields in the area of Dorno, and then we spend uh, the second half of the morning in the Cascina, that means a farm holidays, that produce their own rice and also some other typical products, but absolutely where we have to taste the risotto, so the Italian rice cooked with saffron. We spent a couple of nights in a hotel castle in the heart of Po Valley, exactly in the area 
of the Oltre Popavese, an important producer of both red and white wines, to which we dedicated one day of visit, including a good uh, wine tasting. And then we spent a couple of days, a couple of nights in a Lombardy typical firm house, became a four star hotel nearby Cremona, the city of Stradivarius, the great creator of violins. We are going, of course, to visit uh, his museum. We include the visit of the Certosa of Pavia, a complex that included a monastery and a sanctuary that dates back to the Middle Age. And we end the tour having an amazing cruise on the river Mincio that runs in the city of Mantua, having a lunch on board with a little boat for 10, 15 people and ending the experience with a guided tour of the city of Mantua, the city of the great poet Virgilius. The second of experience of Lombardy uh, is for people who like mountains and who like to approach the area close to the border with Switzerland, where Milan people used to go for skiing and have a lot of second house for summer and winter holidays. Actually, we sleep tonight in a typical Alpine four-star hotel in Ponte di Legno, that is a beautiful mountain village at the bottom of the Passo del Tonale. That's an important mountain pass that divides the Western Alps to the Dolomites. We will catch a cableway at the Passo del Tonale to have a beautiful view also to the Dolomites Eastern side. We spend an afternoon relaxing in the Bath of Bormio and we sleep tonight in a typical four-star hotel in the city of Sondrio in the center of the Valpellina famous producer of the Bresaula, that it's like a ham, a smoked ham, very good and very nice, that it's used to be eaten in the uh, very dietetic lunch in the summer in Italy with just rucola, uh, salt, pepper, uh, oil, and lemon. But the Valtellina is also the place of the village of Tirano, where the red train of the Bernina Express departs every day, twice per day, to San Moritz in Switzerland. We will catch the red train Bernina and we arrive to San Moritz where we spend the lunchtime and the afternoon and then we continue to Livigno. Livigno is a beautiful village, 2,000 people at more than 2,000 meters on the level of the sea that since 1970s has no VAT. It means no taxes on the most important electronical products like mobile phone, computers, uh, cameras, and so on. And for this reason, in the last year, some of the most important fashion brands, Italian and not only, but like Cavalli, Gucci, Armani, Prada, and so on, open their own shops in Livigno. And people can go there, have an uh, evening shop entering in these amazing places and spending a very few amount. For people who don't like uh, shopping, you have the chance, they have the chance to walk in the beautiful pedestrian main street of Livigno with beautiful view on the peaks of the mountains that separate Italian from Italy from Switzerland. We catch a ferry to go to the Monte Isola at Lake Iseo and we end this tour visiting with a local guide the rock engraving park of Val Camonica, the first place to be declared UNESCO World Heritage in 1979 in Italy. We now are moving in the northwest of Italy in a region called Liguria. We offer a regular tour of four days of Liguria, visiting probably the most famous, the most popular places of this region, like Genoa, the biggest port of the Mediterranean, Portofino, Santa Margherita, Rapallo, and Cinque Terre. But in this experience, we are focusing on the inner side of the region, and the small side of the coast includes between Rapallo and the Cinque Terre that normally are outside the itinerary. But they are really, really beautiful places. We spent two nights in a four-star hotel with the beautiful swimming pool on the level of the sea in the village of Sestri Levante, and two nights in an antique building, Albergo Diffuso in Dolce Acqua. What does Albergo Diffuso mean? In small villages, generally medieval or Renaissance villages, uh, some hotels property come, they, uh, buy, they buy a, a building, they make their own hotel, and then they start buying some small apartments close to the hotel by private, and they give 
customers the possibility to choose if to stay in the main building of the hotel or if you come to the reception taking their hand the key of the apartment and stay some days like an Italian. The characteristic of this apartment is they were bought by different properties, uh, different owners, and so everyone was uh, made according to the wish of the owner, most or less modern, most or, more, most or less design, and so on. And the hotels give the customer the possibility to choose in which kind of apartment he would like to spend these days. We visit the Museum of the Filagree in Campo Ligure, a little village north of Genoa, the quarry of Gambatesa, where they still are uh, taking the uh, blackboard, the village of fishermen of Camogli, where to taste the focaccia or the cheese focaccia, a typical local bread, the Museum of the Farmer Community of Pigna, we learn how to use the pottery in uh, um, Albisola, and we spend during the couple of nights of Dolce Acqua, we will have the possibility to taste some of the best local wine and olive oil during uh, a dinner. We are now going to a very popular region of Italy that we are sure that everybody knows in the world. It's Emilia Romagna. The capital of this region is Bologna, the uh, place of the oldest university in the world. The west side of the region is called Emilia. The east side of the region is called Romagna. For Italians, basically, it's the same region, but they have a, a, a very a deep uh, an interest to the area where um, they belong to, because they have different dialects, different food, different traditions, and so on. That's why we start from the experience of Emilia, the western side of the region, sleeping tonight in a medieval in a medieval castle in Vigolino near Piacenza, and then in a, two nights in an elegant five-star hotel in Parma, the city of music. That's why we are visiting also the uh, museum of Giuseppe Verdi. But Emilia is probably famous worldwide for its, its food. Mortadella, Parma ham, prosciutto crudo, eh, Modena balsamic vinegar, and then tortellini. We are basically visiting all these places, making a guided tour and having a final tasting. We also uh, have the possibility to have a tour on board the Ferrari Maranello, because Emilia is also the land of the great cars, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, and so on. This tour includes a 15 minutes trip all around the streets of Maranello, the client can drive, having a professional pilot on this side with all the information, useful information during this experience. Or if you don't like uh, to drive, you can sit close to the pilot and listen to him, uh, the, the noise of the engine of this amazing Ferrari. We will learn to make tortellini in a cooking class in the city of Bologna just at the end of this tour. For people who like small medieval villages and also the Adriatic coast, so the sea, you have to go to Romagna. We start the tour of Romagna exactly in the same way as we finish the tour of Emilia, so with the Tortellini cooking class in Bologna and the visit of the city of Bologna. As we visit a lot of small villages medieval, and we have to walk, we have to walk because small medieval villages have a lot of stairs, but they are very beautiful, sometimes there are a lot of lifts or mechanical stairs and so on. But anyway, we know that the day, especially in the summertime, can be uh, long and tiring. So we have choose for you two different accommodation in hotel with spa. Two nights in Castel San Pietro Terme, that it's a thermal city with this uh, bath and swimming pool with hot water. And two nights in the hotel spa and suites in Montelfiore on the Apennines, but very close to the sea. We visit the Museum of Fellini, the great uh, film director that will open in 2021. And the Castles Estense and Delizia di Bel Riguardo that belong to the noble family of Estense in Ferrara and its suburbs. And we finish the experience having a lunch with seafood in the beautiful village of Comacchio on the Adriatic Sea and visiting the Byzantine neon monuments in Ravenna with local guides.
Another extremely popular region is Veneto, especially for its capital, Venice, but also for cities such as Verona, Padua, Vicenza, and so on. As Veneto is the first region for production of wine in Italy, we have decided to follow in both experiences the itinerary of the wines. In the experience number one, we are looking for the very good red grapes of the Valpolicella, used to make one of the best Italian wines, the Amarone della Valpolicella. We spend one day touring the Valpolicella with tasting of wine and with an amazing lunch in one of the most interesting villages. We sleep two nights in a hotel resort four star in the center of Valpolicella, <clears throat> and then two overnights in the antique farm became four hotel star in Mussolente, the eastern side of Veneto. In Vicenza, you'll have the chance to learn how to make a first Italian dishes, and especially the tiramisu, probably the dessert, the most popular Italian dessert to join north to south of the region. Half day for relaxing at the bath of Reco Aro, visit of the Museum of Oil on the eastern side of Lago di Garda, Lake Garda, the biggest Italian lake, and the visit of the producer of cheese Asiago close to Vicenza. It's a white, soft cheese. We visit also a castle, medieval castle, Castle Suave, old property of the family Scala, the same family that ruled the city of Verona during one century in the Middle Age. The experience Veneto number two leads us to sleep in amazing five-star old villas in the center of Valdobbiadene, the area of the production of the Prosecco di Valdobbiadene, like a champagne wine. Uh, this area joined the list of the UNESCO World Heritage a couple of years ago because of the beauty of its landscape made of vineyards. And we spent another couple of days in Antico Farm luxury five-star hotel in Mira, not far from Venice. This is the area of the old Venice villas. They were built in a period between 15 and 1700 by rich Venetian family that decided to escape from the chaos of Venice. Today, the chaos is because of the tourist aspect of the city. In the past, it was the center of the commerce of the Mediterranean and especially the point of connection between the West and the Eastern known world of that period. And so they decided to escape and to build uh, some incredible villas with garden, pools, and so on. We visit the Malcontenta, made by Palladio, a great Byzantine architect, and the other one, Villa Pisani, is a national heritage and has an amazing uh, space with garden and fountains. So the itinerary is to follow the villas and follow the wines, because we stay one day discovering and tasting the Valdobbiadene wine. But we also are visiting the Museum of the Alpini, that it's a branch of the uh, Italian army experts in mountain and important uh, during the World War I, and the Museum of the Battle in Vittorio Veneto, that it's a symbol of the, that war for us, the Italian. And talking about wars and talking about position on the border, we have to include an interesting visit to the region Friuli Venezia Giulia. The region uh, has a border at the north with Austria and the east side with Slovenia. Its capital is Trieste, but its territory changed a lot of time during its history. Especially, the region joined the Kingdom of Italy in 1918 at the end of the First World, but it lost a lot of the territory, especially the peninsula called Istria, that nowadays is 90% part of Slovenia and 10% part of Croatia, were given Croatia, were given Yugoslavia at the end of the war too, because of the debts of the war that Italia had to pay. So the, the, the region Friuli became an important point of division between the western side of the world and the eastern side of the world. And something really curious happened to one city that was exactly on the border. Basically the same that happened in Berlin, but the history of Berlin is known worldwide. The history of Gorizia probably is less popular. This is a place that we are going to visit during this five days tour. 
Gratia was divided at the end of the Second War in two halves. The first half stayed with Italy, and so it grew like Italy during the economic boom of 1950-1960, while the second half became part of the new nation of Yugoslavia. The name of the city was transformed into Nova Gorica, like New Gorizia, and the custom was exactly in the middle of the main pedestrian street of Gorizia, with Italian police in one side and Yugoslavian police on the other side. At the end of Yugoslavia in 1990s, Nova Gorica became part of Slovenia. Slovenia joined the European Union, the custom was removed, uh, but the border still exists and you can walk from Italy to Slovenia and then Slovenia to Italy whenever you want. Now, the divided town will become a unique town in 2025 because the European Union chose the two cities as the European, as the one European town for culture in 2025. We visit the biggest war cemetery of Italy in Red di Puglia. We visit the city of Trieste, the most important Roman ruins in the north of Italy, that means the archaeological park of Aquileia. And we are having a San Daniele Ham, similar to the uh, Spanish uh, Hamon Serrano tasting. We sleep tonight, farm holiday hotel with pool in Sacile and a restored house again in the countryside in the village of Duino. I'm ending the north of Italy talking about the Dolomites. So we have a, a regular tour that goes to the Dolomites departing from land with the duration of four days and three nights. But in this tour, we are visiting the most important places of Dolomites, Cortina d'Ampezzo, Bolzano, it's beautiful lakes. But Dolomites has, have many things, most things to offer. That's why we are going to visit the western side of the Dolomites, sleeping two nights in Madonna di Campiglio and two nights in the village of Brunico. That's the most, uh, the biggest Italian village where German is mainly spoken, because this area was part of the Austrian uh, Hungarian Empire till the end of the World War I. But most of the family name, most of the tradition, most of the culture of the area is still German or Austrian, I mean, and people used to, um, to, um, to speak Italian only for work, and not, not at home at all. We are having a relaxed morning at the Battle of Boario. We are taking a cableway in Brunico to go up to 2000 500 meters on the level of the sea, entering the Rifugio and having a tasting of cheese, wine, and local uh, ham. We visit Lake Caresia. This lake was created by people in 1960 when an, a dam was open and the old village was completely covered by the water of the dam. Of course, people uh, abandoned the village before and another village was, uh, was built in another place, more a valley. So all the village, all the old village was covered by the, 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 the water and the lake was created like this. So nowadays during the summertime when the level of the water of the lake is lower than the rest of the year, you can see appearing from the surface of the lake, the bell tower of the main church of the village while the rest of the village is still under water. We visit the producer of yogurt in Vipiteno with a tasting. We visit the Museum of Wood and a Campo Turres medieval castle. So this was the, the, the first part of our experience talking about the north of Italy, but now I'm talking about all the experience concerning the center of Italy. All these tours, except the first one I'm talking about, so the task, the north of Tuscany depart from Rome. But the first node of Tuscany is still departing from Milano. Uh, Tuscany doesn't need any introduction. Of course, it's one of the most popular Italian destination because of Florence, Pisa, San Gimignano, Siena, and so on. But we would like to lead you to the node of Tuscany, the area called the Maremma, an important producer of wine, Morellino di Scansano, an area characterized by the presence of the Butteri, a Tuscany mountain herder. They live in the farm with their cows, with their horses, with their dogs uh, supporting them for this. They will do a show for us in a farm and then we have the chance to taste their typical products of the area. 
We sleep one night in a resort on the hills of Pistoia, the green city, the city of the production of trees and um, a lot of flowers and any kind of plants and three nights in a four-star hotel with sea view room in Piombino in face of the island called Elba, the place where Napoleon Bonaparte spent some of his last years of life. We catch a ferry with our vehicle on board and we will tour the island with a local guide and we we'll finish the visit with an amazing lunch with view on the bay of the Elba with seafood. We visit the Museum of Pinocchio in Collodi, where the writer of this famous book was born. And also we include a tour at the quarry of Carrara with a transfer in four by four jeep and local guide to discover the most infamous place in the world where the marble of Carrara is extracted. The second experience of Tuscany departs from Rome is more classical and permit you to discover some of the most important wine cellar. We are having a lunch in, at the Castello Banfi in Montalcino, producer of Brunello di Montalcino, and the lunch experience at the, the wine cellar of Giovanni da Verrazzano in Greve in Chianti. We sleep tonight uh, in Radda in Chianti, the smallest villages in the Chianti Valley, in an old palace, became four-star hotel, and in another old palace close to Siena and Monte Bulciano in Turrit, a small medieval village, we spent another two nights. We visit the Museum of Glasses in Colle Valdelsa, a Renaissance town, and the uh, Museum of Truffles in the Orcia Valley, another UNESCO World Heritage, and we visit the city of Arezzo. We are now talking about the small Tuscany, the little Tuscany on the eastern side of the coast on the Adriatic. This is the name we use to call the region of the Marche, includes between the Apennines and the Adriatic Sea. We sleep two nights in a four-star ho urban hotel in a suite in Ascoli Piceno, and two nights in a luxury farm holidays on the Bay of Conero, beautiful view on the city of Ancona that we are visiting together with Urbino with a special entry to the National Gallery that includes paintings made by the local painter, Raphael. With the cooking class, we discover how to make the Olivia Scolane, traditional dish that means big green olives oil filled in with uh, meat, uh, Parmesan cheese and uh, eggs, then fried in a very hot oil with the soft heart in the center and a very crushing uh, surrounds. Very typical use, especially in the center of Italy, also in Rome, as a starter before having a pizza. We are ending this experience having a lunch in San Benedetto del Tronto to taste very good seafood. Now we are talking about the region Umbria, probably most famous in the world because of Assisi or the a Etruscan city of Perugia is the smallest of the uh, central Italy regions. That's why this tour lasts four days and three nights, where we sleep in the village of Scheggino, in an elegant eco resort obtained from an ancient medieval village surrounded by trees and wood. We will propose again the truffle hunting with the local professional, Jasper Black Truffle. We are having a boat trip at Lake Trasimeno with stopping at its highland. We enter the castle of Castiglione del Lago and we are having a tasting of local wines and a pottery class in Beruta, the capital of ceramic, not far from Perugia. We are now talking about the region Lazio, the region of our capital, Rome. We have imagined a person that would like to visit the villages close to Rome after spending some days in Rome. Rome is a very beautiful and amazing city with a lot of things to do and to see. But of course, after that, people need a rest, need a relax. That's why we have included the four days accommodation, two plus two in farm holiday houses in the villages of Vetralla and Poggio Bustone. The experience is to catch a cable way to go up to 2,200 meters on the Mount Terminillo, the place where the Roman used to go for skiing visit the biggest museum of Roman art outside Rome in the region, in the village of Palestrina, 
one of the biggest museum of toys in the village of Zagarolo in Europe, I mean, and the museum of tools in the village of Leonessa in the north side of the region in the province of Rieti. In the southeast of Rome, in the area called the Castelli Romani, we will experience the Fiaschetteria, so a typical bar or a small restaurant that often offered some very simple food and glass of local red or white wines. We uh, include in this experience a tasting of the porchetta. Porchetta is like a small young pig pork cut in slices, filled inside a bread and made like a sandwich. In the second of experience of Lazio for another four days, three nights tours, we go to the Tuscia, the area of the north of the region around the city of Viterbo, an important medieval university, and also the city of the popes close to the border with both regions, Umbria and Tuscany. We sleep for, for three nights in a charming historical house in the village of Soriano. We will catch a private boat to discover the Lake Bolsena, one of the most important volcanic lakes of Italy. We will have a pottery class in Civita di Bagnoregio, the village that, are, that is disappearing was a village built on the top of a mountain of volcanic origin. The erosion of the stone and on the rock is making that all around the village has disappeared along the century. The only way to connect the old Civita di Bagnoregio to the modern Civita di Bagnoregio that was founded and born in the last few years is through a new, completely new bridge planted in the valley that separate the two cities and only through this bridge pedestrians or uh, people with bicycle can enter Civita di Bagnoregio paying a tax of five euros that was introduced of course it's included in this experience it was introduced by the mayor of the village trying to avoid the massive escape of the local people of the village and with this money they finance for example activities like the ceramic class permitting to people to go every day in the village where cars are not allowed there's one church some shops and a couple of restaurants and more than a couple of restaurants we visit the producer of the white local wine est 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 Ponte and the amazing park of the monsters in Bomar. so built centuries ago by a noble local family uh, it includes a lot of statues, monuments, mythology, uh, gods, uh, pools, uh, houses with strange uh, shapes. All this has a connection with something esoteric or magic and inspired a lot of important uh, modern artists, like, for example, the Spanish painter Salvador Dali. We have no explication, but just a lot of theories concerning the origin of this park. We also visit the, the Monterozzi Necropolis, a UNESCO site that uh, concerns the Etruscan uh, community. We end the experience of the center of Italy talking about the region of Abruzzo. It's a region uh, includes between the uh, Apennines and the coast of the Adriatic, has the highest peaks of the Apennines chains of Italy, characterized by very cold and snowing winters and hot summers. Has a very good connection with a lot of tunnels and uh, viaducts um, to Rome. We are arriving exactly from Rome in one hour, more or less, and we sleep two nights in the luxury farm of the village of Mosciano, where a lot of chefs uh, arrive because this area was not very touristic 20 25 years ago they opened their resorts and restaurants giving the chance to the customers to look at them during the cook uh, moment and then sitting all together with the explication of the food this is the ex dinner experience we will do in another resort close to the one where we sleep we catch a cable way to go to the monte vitelle in the village of pescasseroli we sleep another four, another two nights in a four-star hotel in the Abruzzo National Park, one of the biggest Italian national parks. We visit the caves of Pietra Secca, the Museum of Chamoine Opi, one that makes part of the club of the one of the most beautiful villages of Italy. 
and we will do the experience of trabocco that it's a tools built in the past by the fishermen to make uh, useful their system to fishing for fishing they were abandoned with the introduction of new most modern system and this is like a little house built on the level of the sea that give you the possibility to have a dinner to have a lunch sorry uh, in this condition uh, tasting some of the best sea local seafood fished in the area that's all for me. I have finished the center of Italy and I give again the speech to Luigi that will introduce the tour departing from Rome and to the south of Italy. Yeah, thank you so much, Alessandro. Uh, here we are. We are going forward in our virtual traveling on uh, Italy, discovering our Italian experiences as the map suggests us painting here in yellow, we can see in the right side, we have the southern part of our peninsula. Uh, we will the, um, uh, we have some attorneys for visiting the southern part of Italy in with the regions of Molise, Apulia, Basilicata, Campania and Calabria that are departing of course from Rome um, and uh, there are whole regions that, that what I already mentioned in the south that suffered in the last centuries a, a lot of the immigration so are very very interesting for the for the theme for the fact of the route tourism uh, that means the tourism for the people that would like to come back in Italy visiting the places from which their ancestors departed and immigrated in, in the last centuries but the first one we're going to visit is the Molise one, the Molise region that is uh, uh, here, here we can see painting in yellow as the caption suggested is a small, very small area with a tracer that must be discovered. That's because um, is the, we are talking about the second smallest uh, regions in Italy that uh, is less known for the tourism but is very 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 interesting. This, uh, do of his uh, dimensions we have uh, four days and three nights itinerary um, we will uh, have as accommodations a mountain hotel a lovely mountain hotel in the natural park area of Capracotta and then we are going to Isernia that is the second biggest and most important uh, city of uh, Molise territory in uh, which we have a four stars hotel room and uh, then uh, in the city of this area we will visit a very very important uh, museum of paleolithic one of the most important of the world italy another visit very interesting is the archaeological area of sepino where we have the remains a very important remains uh, of a roman and ancient roman city and uh, we will have an experience together with a local professional of a workshop of knives, one of the most important artisanal laborers of uh, Molise. We will visit the Hebi of Monte Cassino, that is the oldest Italian monastery that it was evenly bombed during the World War II and now it was totally restored and it has a lot of history to be to be described, to be tell. And besides, it's beautiful because it's very appeal and has a, a lovely and a totally restored, as I mentioned, structure. We will, of course, also stop by in Campo Basso, that is the capital, most important city of Molise, where we have a lunch experience for trying the local products of the area. I mean, uh, both uh, food and wine products. We go southern in our virtual journey, stopping in Campania, uh, as we can see here, yellow painted in our map. is one of is a pretty famous Italian region to have some of the places that are located in these regions. I'm talking about Naples, talking about Capri and the Amalfi Coast that are some of the most famous and popular uh, tourist destinations in Italy. Uh, as uh, we usually do, we would like to offer with these itineraries an alternative to the mo most famous places in Italy. So we have uh, for Campania the Cilento territories in our uh, in our itinerary, in our tour of uh, Campania, that uh, being a small part of the region is uh, four days, it lasts four days and three nights. Cilento um, 
the caption says that UNESCO award the territories because in 1998 they were included into the list of the, the heritage of our humanity by the UNESCO due of the combination of both natural and historical places very very important and so beauty as well we will uh, have as accommodation a, a very uh, a lovely resort in the small town of Castellabate that is a, um, a small fisherman village in front of the sea very very nice for the three nights uh, among the, the different experiences we have in uh, along the coastline of Cilento in a small town called Pioppi we will have a guided tour of the museum of the Mediterranean cuisine um, a very nice activity and then in the hand in with a local chef we'll have a cooking class with the local products we will produce we will make the local dishes typical of the Cilento traditions and in the hand the same products that we made together with all the group with the with the chef we will have a lunch experience in trying these products of the Mediterranean cuisine we'll have a boat trip in the promontory of Capo Palinuro, one of the most beautiful beaches of all the um, Campania coastline and Chilent as well. We will visit uh, the Morigerati natural area that is amazing with this path in the woods. And uh, we pass to the, uh, the, the cultural side of UNESCO with Pestum, first of all, that is uh, one of the most, the most important, very, very um, beautiful examples of Greek settlements in Italy. That's because um, they date back to the 7th uh, century before Christ when the whole southern Italy was a Greek colony. And so in Pestum, also known as Pesto, we have uh, this lowly archaeological area with, with uh, temples and also a museum that we, we visit both with uh, a local guide. Another important element for cultural attractions of Cilento is uh, the Certosa of Padula, that is uh, the charter house, the biggest charter house in Italy, that is located in this uh, inner, um, inner place of Cilento in the um, in a place called Padula, where we visit with the local guide, the, um, the internal um, rooms that are very, very well decorated, as well as its gardens. Uh, last but not least, surely, is the mozzarella activity. That's because uh, mozzarella is probably one of the most famous products of our production of Italy that is famous worldwide. The mozzarella for being the one of the most important uh, elements for making the pizza, but it's also good uh, in, in its own. To, to be to be tasted we will uh, have the experience of uh, discovering the way they produce the mozzarella because Campania is the place where the um, that is most famous for the production of mozzarella so we will uh, go in a local farm and with the local um, the local people we will have uh, uh, an, an experience for uh, understand how they produce mozzarella and uh, as we always do in the hand in we will have a final testing of this uh, uh, very delicious product we go in, in another regions uh, actually two because Puglia and Basilicata is the only experience we have as itinerary that combines two regions together um, we have in this case a seven days uh, itinerary that eventually will be um, changed heading the um, a flight from Rome or wherever and uh, permitting allowing to the customer to the travelers to enter in direct, directly in Apulia uh, or Basilicata um, for example in Puglia landing directly in the airport of Bari and or Brindisi that have, uh, has a lot of international connections as well um, the, our caption say the ashes lands and the astonishing sea landscape rural heritage that's because the we will visit uh, in these seven days both the inner and the coastline uh, territories of these uh, lovely regions uh, where the accommodation are unique because we will have uh, the experience to sleep to have our little house for two days as truly this famous uh, 
uh, ancient uh, uh, dwellings, uh, rural dwellings made by stone for the local uh, local people in this uh, area of Apulia that do have the, their uniqueness now are part of the UNESCO World Heritage in the city of Arberobello. So we'll have one truly for us in for two nights. From the, the inner side of Apulia, and then we go to the coastline, because for three nights we will we will stay. We will have a, um, a lovely resort in front of the great coastal landscapes of Salento, and then for the last time we will come back in the inner part of uh, uh, Italy, in the Basilica, the region, in the famous Matera city, the city of the Sassi, this uh, uh, lovely town with uh, where the the whole town is. Uh, made with these uh, houses that were uh, obtained with, from caves or carved from the stone uh, that means actually sassi this is the translated in italy in italian language sorry and the duo for their uniqueness are a unesco site as well so uh, also another great uh, accommodation and experiences as well at the same time among the different experiences, we have uh, a cooking class uh, with a local professional for prepare together with all the group dishes of the Apulian traditions. And in the hand, uh, as usually, we'll have a lunch all together for, with the same products that we already produced in the cooking class. We will have uh, a private navigation departing from the little harbor of Otranto that will last four hours and we will have uh, a lunch on board of the boat uh, in front of the lovely coastline of uh, Apulia. A very nice activity that is a sensory laboratory. Uh, we will create a personalized perfume with a professional in Matera, creating, uh, created with the natural extracts of plants and flowers flowers of the of the rural area of Matera and it will be a perfect souvenir to bring with bring back with them uh, in the end of the activity as a souvenir of the activity we'll have a, a um, tourist journey on the B the famous B the Ape Calesino uh, we will sit in the on the on the back and discover with a guide the lovely uh, white city of Ostuni uh, we will also have uh, discovered the famous liquor strega that is actually so close to the Apulia border in the town of Benevento in Campania region. The vineyard, one of the lovely and uh, interesting vineyards we have in Salento in the south part of Apulia, where we like to we will uh, discover the production of the wine and also have a tasting of the famous Negramaro and uh, uh, other lovely and very delicious wines of Salento. We'll visit an olive, an olive, olive farm in Salento uh, territory where we have also an olive oil tasting in the hand and a class for discover how to, um, to taste the olive oil properly. The last region we visit with the, our uh, Italian experiences is Calabria. Um, as we can see here in the map, we have painted is the southern point of our peninsula, uh, 800 kilometers of coastline, and uh, in the inner uh, territories we have three different uh, um, natural area, natural parks, and uh, also a lot of uh, towns, rural towns with a lot of uh, uh, cultural heritage. So we have in Calabria actually so much to see, and uh, due of this reason, we divided, we split the Calabria territory into two parts, and we have Calabria one, the first uh, itinerary that uh, occupied the northern area of Calabria, and then Calabria two, the second one that uh, allows us to visit the southern part of Calabria. Uh, as well as I mentioned already for Apulia and Basilicata tour, we can, uh, in this case, change the itinerary and um, head uh, um, the entrance uh, in the Calabria territory by plane, landing directly in, uh, in Calabria territory in the uh, La Mezza International Airport. They have also a lot of uh, international connections as well. In the first Calabria experience, uh, we have as accommodations two Albergo di Fuso. We already saw this, uh, mm, this Albergo di Fuso in Liguria before with Alessandro. 
properly translated as spread out uh, hotel that means that you have instead of uh, the key of a hotel room you have the key of a little house or a place uh, in uh, in a building in the in the whole town of little towns in Italy or in the cities uh, that are obtained from the store the houses that allows you to have a perfect experiences of the local living in this lovely town in the in the inner part of Italy. In this case, for Calabria one, we have um, the Albergo Diffuso, this lovely concept in Morano, that is a place, um, a little town uphill, surrounded by a rural area and the mountains of uh, Polino National Park, uh, that is the biggest and largest uh, Italian natural area and uh, then we passed for the last two nights in Belmonte Calabro that is a uh, um, appeal on the on the um, in front of the coast with a lovely panorama on the Tyrrhenian Sea. Among the experiences we have uh, a little journey on the steam train we have uh, in a uh, Sila National Park we have a full day experience in the morning we will have a little journey on the full restored steam train that goes into the woods in this lovely uh, touristic journey then in the afternoon we will visit the uh, giant pine of Sila that is a, a natural area with these this 50 meters tall uh, black pines and then a journey on electric boat on the lake surrounded by these lovely woods. We have uh, a private navigation in the Iranian Sea in front of the Cedar Riviera that is a 8 uh, kilometers long coastline where they produce the, the cedar. Um, in the Polino National Park, we will have two lovely activities that are in the morning, the visit to the Romito Caves, uh, where we have the ro one of the oldest, most uh, um, uh, old uh, rock carvings we have in Italy that dates back to 9,000 years before Christ. And then a river walking activity in the Lao River. Uh, we also have visited the Amarelli Licorice Museum, that is one of the most important licorice producers in Italy. And already mentioned the cedars. That's because in the Cedar Riviera, that is eight kilometers long um, along the, uh, the Tyrrhenian coastline, in this part of Calabria, they produce a unique and uh, very peculiar cedar that, uh, due to its uniqueness, is very important for the um, for the Jews, for the people that comes from Israel to to buy these uh, these cedars, the, because they use for, for the Sukkot, the feast of ten barnacles that each year in the late September and the early October took place. And it's a very all important uh, moment for them. We have also the guided tour of Morano, a guided visit that besides the monuments, we include also the discovering of local traditions and the visit of the Codex Museum, the Codex that is an unwritten gospel that dates back to 7th century and the view of uniqueness is part of the UNESCO heritage. In the second part of Calabria uh, itinerary, we will uh, have uh, the, um, we will visit the southern part of our lovely uh, Calabria regions. Uh, the first two nights we will stay, we will have the same albergo di Fuso already mentioned for Belmonte Calabro. Then we pass to our restored country house in the inner side of the regions where we have also an educational activity on a farm to discover all the traditions of the peasant life and in the hand in the, we have a dinner with the local products. The last three nights we'll stay in an elegant resort in the Capo Vaticano that is a lovely place, one of the most important tourist destinations along the Tyrrhenian coast. Among the experiences, we have uh, uh, this uh, seven-hour-long, uh, seven-hour-long experience of navigations with this sailing in the Costa Viola. That is one of the most beautiful part of the Tyrrhenian Sea coastline in Calabria regions. We will stop in by in the lovely uh, town of Chilla, that is a fisherman village, so picturesque, appeal, very, very, very nice to be discovered. We will have uh, a trip in the silk where some uh, local guys will lead us into the fields for discovering the production of the silk. And in the hand, we will have down a giant tree with a lovely experience of organic lunch. We will have a meal um, with products made with organic uh, 
uh, agriculture, production by themselves. Uh, we will visit some of the symbols of this uh, region, of Calabria region, as for example the Aragonese castle in Le Castella, uh, that is this lovely little castle on a little island in front of the sea, linked with the coastline with a little stripe of earth. Uh, the Catholica in steel, one of the most important churches we have in Calabria region that dates back to 9th century. The Bergamot, that is one of the other important uh, citrus we have in Calabria, uh, that is used you not know, just for the, the food production, but also is very important for the perfume industry that uh, is very, very common to be used uh, for uh, very important companies as, for example, Chanel. Um, we will have uh, as guided tour the visit of Reggio Calabria, the most important metropolitan area of Calabria. Uh, with is uh, um, uh, is uh, the kilometer il kilometro più bello d'Italia. That means the most beautiful kilometers we have in Italy. That uh, actually is the seafront of the town in uh, Reggio Calabria, uh, according to what told about this lovely area from the poet D'Annunzio. Uh, this is actually very good because they have these giant magnolias, a lot of statues, and a lovely panorama with Sicily in front. In Reggio Calabria, we will have also the opportunity to visit the archaeological museums, museum where they are stored the bronze, this bronze statue the, of the Greek warriors, that the most uh, uh, probably the most important statue that are connected to the Greek uh, history we have uh, still in Italy. So this is the last of our Italian experiences. As we have saw, there are 23 different uh, uh, tours, different uh, itineraries idea that uh, operates as private tours that allows you to visit deeply, uh, including accommodation, experiences and tastings always connected with the local traditions for have uh, a deeply and different way to discover all this, uh, um, all the territory of our peninsula. Uh, but we have also, and I will briefly Repeat now uh, the mini tours we have with regular departures that operates uh, in uh, with regular departure departing from Rome, Milan, and Genoa that allows you to visit uh, different places of our Italy. We operate in high season from the, the month of April to October with the regular departure guarantee departure and the low season in the other months of the year in which the only change is that we have a minimum of person of four people to be to confirm the departure the characteristics of these mini tours that we have alternative destinations that means uh, uh, besides uh, Rome, Florence, uh, Venice, uh, Naples and the Amalfi Coast we have so much to see in Italy and with these mini tours we offer to you the opportunity to do that. Uh, do you have uh, the effect of visiting alternative destinations as to be to have small groups and uh, so as you can know easily understand the, a small group is easily handled by the guy and offer um, a better opportunity to be a better experience by the people that is traveling. We always include the local products tasting and uh, we have always in the town we, we have accommodations, central hotels in the center of the, of the towns. That means beside the most important square, beside the most important monument, or uh, aside the, uh, the most important uh, shopping uh, uh, streets, uh, that's for a lot of the people to live the really experience of the town they're visiting. We can see here briefly in the um, and better with the help of this map, we have our regular tours, our mini tours that are available as individual or combined. Uh, individual departing from Rome, Milan or Genoa with the five or four day solutions that could be combined into them uh, for, a, for a combining two of these regions, two of these tours, even a seven or eight days long experience. 
uh, we have uh, departing in the visiting the northern territory of Italy. Uh, here we can, we can see with the, this color in pink, uh, departing from Milan, the Lake Store, the only tour you can have uh, in the northern Italy that allows you in four days to visit all the lakes we have in the northern Italy. Uh, we have indeed uh, in our itinerary the um, the Como Lake uh, with sleeping in Como, uh, the, the Ma Lake Maggiore with the visit of, uh, of Stressa, um, the Lake Orta in Piedmont territory, the Lake Garda where we visit uh, the lovely Sirmione and Riva del Garda and also Verona where we will stay um, in this uh, city that is part of the UNESCO heritage. We have painted in yellow in, the, in our map available from Milan and also from Rome, the tour of uh, Italian Riviera, Liguria regions, where we sleep in Genoa, and with the most important places and the tourist attractions of uh, Liguria, with the Portofino, uh, Santa Margherita Ligure, and the uh, UNESCO award the Porto Venere and uh, Cinque Terre. We visit also, we have an, a tour for Dolomites, uh, this uh, UNESCO Howard natural area where we sleep in Cortina d'Ampezzo, the Italian capital for the winter sport, the uh, spring sports uh, uh, that will held uh, the um, 2026 Olympic Games uh, in, uh, together with Milan territories and also Bolzano capital of the Greek uh, and Latin uh, culture in uh, uh, northern Italy. We have uh, always departing from Milan the French coast itinerary. We will stop uh, by in the independent state of Monaco and then uh, visiting this lovely uh, area in the French coast, sleeping in Nizza with these territories connected also with the story of uh, the, the cinema with Cannes and Saint-Tropez. We have also an individual tour, mini tour of the region of Piedmont, where we sleep in the Turin, this elegant city, the first Italian capital, and uh, we include in this itinerary both the hill, um, as the hill, uh, the hills of uh, Lange, Raoero, and Monferrato area, famous for the wines production that are part of the uh, UNESCO heritage, and also the part of the mountains in Valle d'Aosta regions uh, with the Mont Blanc, Aosta, and Courmayeur as well. Departing from Genoa, we have the Sardinia and Corsica uh, tours uh, from Genoa and Rome are available, these lovely tours that include the ferries from uh, departing from Rome and Genoa in the first night as well. And that allows us to visit the northern side of Sardinia with this lovely town, uh, these lovely places that are famous for the tourism as uh, the Esmeraldian course uh, and the Palau and Alghero on the on the east side, on the west side, and also the tour of Corsica that will be a perfect combination uh, visiting these territories in the, in the island of Corsica. Then, departing from Rome, we have Tuscany tour, this is a lovely tour. Uh, departing from Rome, we, we sleep, we have accommodation in Siena, part of the UNESCO heritage, and we will visit the places connected to the medieval character we have in Tuscany. The, the Umbria territory, the always departing from Rome with the Etruscan Perugia and Assisi with these churches that are part of the UNESCO heritage. Uh, the Abruzzo region, the Abruzzo region, sorry, here painted in uh, green, dark green, um, visiting both sides of the Abruzzo region in the turn in the inner side with the mountains of the Apennines and then the Adriatic coast. Then finally, to the south, with the, this yellow painted Apulia region um, itinerary, where we sleep in the capital of the Baroque in Lecce, in the Salento region in the south, and then Bari, the capital of uh, Apulia, visiting also some of the uh, UNESCO heritage sites we have in this area as Castel del Monte Alberobello. And the Calabria one, this gray tour, we have. Uh, in the, in the south, departing from Rome, we visit both the inner and the coastline, sleeping in the Tropea, in Tropea and the Cosenza. Uh, the two itineraries of Apulia and Calabria share the visit and one accommodation, one night accommodation in the famous city of the Sassi, Matera. All these tours that I already mentioned uh, are also available as a private tour. 
um, you can also always uh, decide to, uh, to to select one or choose one of these tours and enjoy it exclusively with uh, your family or friends, uh, adding a minimum overprice. We are talking about the 10% overprice from the regular price that can allow you to have the same services as the regular tour or the mini tour with regular departure with the safety of traveling privately because we'll have all the tour, all the services for your own with a minimum price difference. We also have some special tours that are connected and linked with some um, peculiar events we have along Italy and Europe. Uh, I'm talking about the carnival the food and wine experience uh, and the Christmas markets. Uh, in um, Piedmont and in the Emilia tour, we have departures in March and November that can allow us to find the better periods to the best periods to have uh, the, um, the tasting of uh, the truffles, the white, both white and black truffles. Uh, we have an itinerary in Italian Riviera and French coast uh, in, the, in February with the carnival that include the entrance in some of the most important festivities connected to Carnival in Europe, in the French territory, and also the Veneto and Trentino uh, itinerary, the Veneto and Trentino tour, uh, with the visit of the Christmas markets in December, of course, the departure in the Christmas period. is the only tour that we have that includes also the visit of Venice by train departing from Verona. In this case, we will visit uh, these lovely towns of the Veneto and Trentino regions, uh, uh, regions also Innsbruck that is in Austria and um, that in this period are famous for hosting their Christmas markets in the center of this town. The, the tour I already mentioned it so the food and wine uh, experience in uh, uh, Emilia and Piedmont, uh, the Carnival Tour in uh, Italian Riviera and uh, French Coast and the Vento in Trentino in the Christmas markets in, uh, in December are perfect for a family trip in, um, uh, or, or a small group trip uh, as a private tour. We also provide, we have the opportunity, we have the possibility to head in uh, services to be added to the original itinerary, for example, some accommodations in the hotel in which the tour departs or in the, uh, in the days before or after the tour of a people that, that the people booked with us. We can also provide private transfers in the coming into Italy from the airport to the to your hotel of towards the most important train stations or airport we have in Italy. We can arrange excursions for the for the person that travels with us with guide uh, discovering traveling for, to be um, to allow you to visit the most important Italian cities and attractions we have or also book uh, some of the entrances or the events of the most important monuments we have in Italy. Or we can help you create in your own tour, that means that uh, starting from one of, of more needs of the client, we can arrange a tour that can encounter their needs. So you can choose the dates in which we are, you will go to, uh, to travel in Italy. You can choose the destination you are going to, to visit, the, the typology of accommodation we would like to include in your itinerary, or the services. That means, for example, the, um, a private tour, a car with English uh, speaking driver, whatever you would like to add to your itinerary. We can uh, handle and arrange an itinerary up your needs. So this is uh, the, the last thing I would like to show you. This uh, webinar is over. I'm so glad to have, the, have had you today with us. I invite you to follow always our and to check our website, europeando.it, to always be aware of our product and all, as well as our social networks with the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter <clears throat> channel, as well as YouTube. You can find all the videos that describe our products and the Telegram channel as well. So thank you for having been with us and arrivederci. Thank you. Bye bye. Arrivederci.